party people. What's going on? This is Samaj Marsh. I'm the founder of BlueDeathValley.com. I want to welcome you guys back to another special episode of Inside the Valley, the podcast that's devoted to relentless coverage of a and football. Of course, tonight I got my two co-hosts with me to help me out. First up, former a and wide receiver and a Greensboro native, my man, Douglas Dougie Fresh Brown. What's going on, Doug? Hey, Aggie Pride, guys. What's going on? Aggie Pride. Y'all just don't know what's going on behind the scenes, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> you always make it work. Make it one of the guys, one, one of the guys who helps me make it work is uh, needs no introduction. He is uh, the brains of the operation, long time anti insider, a beat writer on bluedeathvalley.com for over two decades, and the current president of the Greensburg chapter of the AAF, my right hand man, Craig Turner. What's going on, CT? CT. Hey, not much, not much, man. Uh, how y'all doing tonight? Man, we are living. Everybody I'm doing living okay? the dream. I'm living. I'm kind of, you know, we had okay. a little technical, right. we had a little technical difficulties <laughs> at the beginning, but I think we uh we, we kind of figured it out. Check it out. Yeah, we we, we gonna make it work. We gonna, we gonna make it do what it do. Um, so look, we had a busy week. Uh, this past this this past couple of days has been so much news coming down the pike. You know, we got a special event this Saturday. Um. Ant Fun Fest, the annual Fun Fest. There was a little bit of doubt because they hadn't really been promoting it, you know, full full speed up until I guess last, like maybe this weekend or Saturday or Sunday. So they actually are having a Fun Fest event. Uh, what time did it start? Eleven o'clock, maybe somewhere around there. Yeah, I think it's eleven. I think it's eleven. They got to go. I think it's eleven or eleven thirty somewhere in there. Yeah, I think it's eleven. They're going to have all the pomp and circumstance. I'm not sure what it's going to entail, but I know there's going to be some vendors out there, and they're going to have the machine, right? The March machine is going to make their 2020, 2023 debut. Um, and yeah. they're going to, uh, I think, I think someone said they got some, some, uh, a few more, few more instruments in, in, uh, this year. They're going to have a bigger band than the, what we were accustomed to. So this, that might be a new look for the March machine. Um, and then, uh, you know, of course. Got game week next Thursday, Thursday night football, and uh, a lot of stuff with camp developments. So, and Craig, you've been busy down because I, I I looked around and on bluedeathside.com right now on the homepage, there's a new there's a new uh, preview article. You do your annual preview every year. The first installment, the offense, is out now. You can check that out on bluedeathside.com and only bluedeathside.com. And our Craig Turner. He, he dissects every aspect of the program, but this week, starting with the offense, Craig, take it away. Get, mm-hmm. Tell us about this article that they'll, they'll be able to read online when they get off this, when they, when they get off this uh, podcast. They can go on and on check it out. But tell, give them a sneak peek of what's in there. Well, uh, the biggest thing is that uh, we we uh, pinpoint personnel. Uh, we talk about personnel different at, at every position. Uh, guys that uh, through camp, uh, through spring ball and through fall camp have kind of stood out. And uh, guys, uh, and basically what you can look for as far as your week to week contributors, uh, not to say this, you know, it's definitive because you can never know who's going to pop up and become a, become a superstar literally overnight. Uh, we've seen that. We saw that happen last year with a few players, uh, guys that, uh, some freshmen that came in that played a lot and, and really uh, turned in great performances. Um, So we did the offense and it gives a, gives a, a try to, I try to give as honest an assessment based on what we've seen so far and without, you know, trying to draw conclusions. And uh, so this week we did the offense and this coming weekend, uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll put up the defense the defensive special teams. Right, right, right. And uh, Doug, we might. I will be, say. Uh, I will say. Ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I will say this. If if you if you have not bought an A and T program recently, you better buy one this year because that roster is the roster is new, a lot new, uh, and a lot of numbers have changed. So you know. Go ahead and fork down to five dollars so you can keep up with what's going on. It's, it's almost it's almost mandatory, and uh, you know, uh, yeah, they, they've been they've been doing 
scrimmages every Saturday at camp. I'm assuming yep. they're going to probably do some type of scrimmage this Saturday, some type of, you know. Like one. Like yeah, I like one. But uh, usually after, for Fun Fest, after the scrimmage is when the guys just put on their jersey and they kind of walk around and intermingle with the crowd. I think they might be signing posters or whatever. So you'll see all these new numbers yeah. and, and faces and, um, it's 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 gonna be interesting, man, to see how everything meshes. But um, Doug, I think we might be uh, might be time for our first uh, Jamaican air horn of the of the year. We, this, we might be we might be it might be at a point we can we can make a major announcement here. Just a... okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Now listen, <laughs> this is still unofficial, but I think the elephant in the room needs to be stated, and that uh far as, you know, um, Craig, you talk about the offense and different position breakdowns. I, I feel pretty comfortable to go ahead and say um, to all the fans who've been asking and inquiring about who's going to be on the center, I feel pretty comfortable that right now, and, and A&T, they, they, you know, it's the worst kept secret because they've been put, they've been promoting this on social media for all week. Number five, the people's champion, Eli Brickhandler, He's my bet. You know, I'm not going to speak for this coaching staff. I'll let, I'll let them make their own announcement. But if, if I was a betting man, I, 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 I put all my money down on number five, uh, being the first guy out there uh, next Thursday night. Uh, he's uh, they've already kind of done some social media campaign stuff, and he's all you know dancing with the with the other key cogs, Prunty and, and Charlie Dixon. So I think you know, I think I think the cat's out the bag. You will find out officially, Doug, um, this coming Monday, we have our first uh, coaches press, press conference, conference of the year. It's going to be noon in the uh, the uh, the ballroom and uh, in the student union. And um, they they always, for those press conferences, they always have game notes, right? So they have to provide information to the opposing uh, broad, you know, the broadcast teams and the opposing uh, SID. So, so, so they have to kind of put out a depth chart, and that's usually when they make. You, you'll find out the first, the first uh, two deep depth chart for the for the for the season, um, and I'm pretty sure Brick Handle will be number one. Um, from what I've been hearing, Jaeger will be number two. Um, if you know, unless things change, and that's that's always a possibility, right? But Doug, um, how, how how do you feel that? Um, that brick handler, you know, after a hard fought competition, he might be the guy. What's your thoughts on that? Well, first off, congratulations to all those guys for yeah. a successful camp, right? You get through camp yeah. healthy, um, get back to taking classes, the rest of the students are on campus. So that's always a big deal, a little sigh of relief there. Um, and it kind of recharges your batteries, right? Because camp is such a long, tough grind. And for uh, our quarterbacks in particular, you know, a lot of those guys were banged up at the end of the season. Rick Handler, um, and, you know, Jaeger had a tough year with some of the injuries. So I'm happy for all those guys. On um, One of our previous shows I stated that I felt confident as all those guys being leaders within that room, and, and that was that position group that we were excited about that battle. So whoever Coach Deems, the starter, or the first guy to take the snaps and who he rolls out there, I'm happy for those guys, or that particular guy. And, um, you know, those guys behind them know you got to stay ready because we saw last year, anytime – anybody's number can be called at any time. So – um, but excited for those yeah. guys, man. Those guys work hard, and they're all great kids, man. Great young men. I got to stop calling them kids. They're young men at this point. They've uh, had a year of college under their belt. So I'm um, excited for them and excited for um, what's coming in the next couple of weeks. And, and that's – I'm glad you mentioned that about, you know, anything could change because uh, we need to get our guy, number one, Jalen Fowler, back on the show because he has a unique perspective. Uh, let's be honest. He was left for dead last year. You know, he, he had COVID right uh in the middle of uh fall camp so he he didn't win out on the uh on, on, on the battle jaeger uh zach jaeger started the central game and then zach jaeger started the next game against north dakota state uh i think he injured his shoulder um and then it was the third game it was fowler and then brick handler and brick handler he he showed a lot and Fowler, you know fowler had some good, nice throws too but uh, that fourth game of the season is when everything changed. And I, I believe at that point, Jaeger had moved down to third on the depth chart. And Jaeger started 
got hurt. Brick Hamlin started, got hurt. We went back to Jaeger. We went back to Fowler, excuse me. And pretty much Fowler never left the field the you know, rest of the season until he had a, 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 a injury for a half. He had, you know, he had set out with a, um, I think we had a fracture in his foot, we found out. But he played the rest of the year. So you always have to be ready. Football is a, is a grueling sport. You know, it's a war of attrition sometimes. And uh, if, if, when they say next man up, they mean it, especially in an 11-game season. And, we, and Craig, we're going against <laughs> some, some, some big bodies on the other side. So Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going uh, – the first, that first three weeks, we're going to find out real quick where we are. <laughs> There's no question about it. Uh, UAB, Central, and Elon. Uh, that that's that's a that's a that's a big chunk to try to chew on at the beginning of the season. But hey, you know, A&T doesn't shy away from competition. You know, we're not going to be out there playing, uh, you know, playing Bennett College or you know, and or Spelman uh, like some teams are doing. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna come out swinging and see what happens. Right. And, um, and like, once again, like, stay, um, we have a deep quarterback room. We have a deep running back room. So there's going to be a lot of running backs yeah. on this roster who might not get the amount of carries that they hope for initially, you know. And you still got to go to practice. You got to go get in that film room. You got to be ready for because you're going to get opportunity. I, I'm almost going to guarantee everybody who wants to make it some noise, you're going to get an opportunity at some point. Right. You might not get as many as other guys, but you're going to get your sample size of opportunity. Take advantage of it. Jaeger, you're going to play football this year for a and I, I, I can almost yeah. guarantee that. You know, you're going, you're going to be behind center. You're going to be throwing some passes. Make them passes count, you know. And, you know, don't, don't, you know, don't think about I should, what I should be doing. Think about what I am. Where are you right now and how are you perfecting yourself to be the best quarterback, the best asset, for a and to, 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 to get this, this offense moving. And if all the guys feel like that, we're going to have a good, we're going to have a good program. Um, but like I said, uh, Craig, we got, we got a busy week, uh, Saturday, that fun fest. You going to be out there or you, or you know, you got, you got the, uh, the picnic, right? Yeah. yeah the picnic on, uh, I, I will probably stop by there. Uh, but, uh, my, my thoughts now are all on that Sunday because we got a major, uh, the the major deal for us is the uh, athletes uh, welcome back uh, picnic out of the farm and uh, 300, 300 plus athletes and we're gonna we're gonna try to show them a good time and get them all a, a, a real nice meal so uh, I'm gonna be busy I'm gonna be busy for the next three or four days and look I love it I always love when you give the game stats on the food give me some poundage of how much food you got how many crates of of uh, uh, potato salad. So t- tell me, tell me, give me, give me an idea of how much we're talking about here. You, you can feed a small army, right? Well, yeah, we got a couple hundred pounds of, uh, of fillets, uh, fish fillets that we're going to be, uh, we're going to be cooking up that day. Uh, good Lord. Um, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 450, 500 pieces of chicken. Uh, all kinds of all kinds of side dishes, um, uh, barbecue, uh, the whole nine yards. We're gonna we're gonna have it. We'll have it out there. That's gonna be nice. That's gonna be nice. Um, <laughs> and it's not open to the general public. This is just for I the know. athletes. Okay. I, I, <laughs> so don't come out, don't come out there don't come out there with any bibs. Don't don't come out there with any bibs and and, and, and your own silverware because. We're gonna turn you around. This is this is strictly this is strictly for the kids. This is something we do. It's been tradition for us now, going on I don't know twenty twenty five years, so probably longer than that. Uh, they were doing it. They, they were doing it when I first joined the Aggie Club. So uh, this is not open to the general public. This is just this is for the kids and the coaches. That's it. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, Doug, you um, you know we had we had our special guest last week, Maceo Bowling. And he was uh, talking about that Hall of Fame golf tournament. And uh, I, I want to commend all my all the viewers, all the people on BlueDeathValley.com, because he said once he got off 
that interview, the, the, the ticket sales and the uh, sponsorship the spike. They just went through the roof. So you guys responded. And uh, it's going to be the Hall of Fame Golf Tournament on September the 8th at Oak Hollow Golf Course in High Point, North Carolina. And it's for a great cause. It's for that Hall of Fame um, Foundation. They're going to be giving money for scholarships and just to improve the, the athletic experience for, for, um, for, for all, the, all the guys, all the student athletes at A&T. Um, and there's a link. I'll put the link back in the description, but there's a link on the site. You go to the homepage, you'll see an actual banner for it at bluedeathvalley.com. And it's only $100, and you can have a, a sponsorship, a whole name, whatever, for your person, your, 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 yourself, your business, or a loved one, if somebody passed away or something like that, you want to honor them, $100. Doug, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and set the bar. Let's, let's get five more people. I want to see five more people, Doug. I like that number. I like that number. Tonight. Yeah, that's, that's, your, that's, your, that's your number. Like that's why I picked it. I want to see five more people tonight to go ahead to that link. Um, it's, on, it's on the site, and I'll, I'll put it in the chat. And sign up on the spot and for hundred dollars, and then let me know you signed up, and then uh, you know say you signed up, and let's go get five more sponsorship minimum. We can do way more than that, but let's just get five before the end of the show, and uh, let's let's go help 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 uh, Macy O'Bowl and the A and T Hall of Fame crew to have a great event on September the eighth. Um, any other stuff? So I guess the the bus trips for UAB that's sold out, right? That, that's that's locked and loaded. Craig. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that's locked and loaded. Uh, Norfolk is sold out. Uh, mm -hmm. Hampton is almost sold out, and we're about halfway on Delaware. So yeah, that. they're go they're going fast. So if you're going, if, yeah, if you're gonna get them, you better get them quick. Talking about the AF. I mean, yeah, trip. it's uh, the the man, the AF buses. Yeah, the AF bus trips uh, this year. The only trip we won't be making is up to Rhode Island. Right. Uh, that's a that's a little bit. That that's a little bit far for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, that's understandable. But man, so so Doug, do you, does it feel like you know almost game week? Does it feel like next Thursday is <laughs> this is real? I'm telling you, man, that Thursday night's throwing me off. I keep checking my calendar, like hey, this can't be right. I'm like marking off the days, and I'm like, what's right. here, man? I had to had to call the folks and like, listen, we gotta we gotta start getting ready. Tailgates a couple weeks away, so listen, we got it's it's time to go. Uh, but no, we're getting ready, man. Um, you know, you talk about Saturday. Typically, you'd have a good, decent scrimmage on Saturday. I don't even know that you touch them up like that Saturday. It may be a light special teams type of deal where you're not doing too much, man. I mean, you're less than a week away at that point. You're within a your, your game week preparation. It's like a normal – what would be your normal Monday or Tuesday. So, I don't know, man. We'll see. I'm excited, man. I know that. Yeah, I, I am too. And uh, – um. What can I say, man? I, I I just I got so much emotions. Uh, and a lot of it, some of that is curiosity because one thing I'll say about Coach Vincent Brown, he has been close to the vets. He has not, you know, he 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 gives out what he wants to get. He he controls the message, controls the narrative. So he'll give out his little social media stuff. I saw him do a commercial where he was talking about season tickets and season game tickets, and he, you know, he was um looking sharp at midfield. But he's, you know, um, well, I, I'll say this. The, the first test of his communication uh, skills and, and that, um, um, that discipline in front of a, a, a microphone will, will take place next Monday. That's his first press conference. And we know his predecessor, Coach Washington, Coach Washington couldn't hold water. He had the worst poker face in the world, right? So if you ask him, <laughs> if you ask him something, you better expect that answer. I want to know if Coach Brown's gonna be that same way. Is he gonna be a little more regarded, or is he gonna be, you know, uh, you know, fly by, seat his pants, and, and have his emotional sleeve? I I, I want to know how he's gonna to react to that Aggie um, media that media gallery that comes out for that press conference next week. That's gonna be interesting to see. You know, um, you you know he's got to be a bundle of nerves. You got you know it's gonna it's gonna be his his. It's gonna be his first game as a as, as a head football coach, and you know he's got he's got a very even demeanor, but you got it, you get you know you know it, you know you know he's 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 got some nervous energy he's going to need to work off he, uh, leading up to next Thursday night. So you know, uh, uh, I I don't envy him on on that part. Well. Um... First of all, he needs to, he needs to know we're a bunch of goofballs, so he don't need to be nervous for us because we gonna you know you know oh, how no. we got, 
I, I don't know if our if our cousin's gonna be at the press conference. <laughs> the one that was, <laughs> I think I think I think we need we need to, we need hey we need to tell Brian Holloway right now, man, don't pass the mic around to the crowd unless you know for sure what they're gonna say. So we we need to screen all questions from 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 the the outside. But uh, yeah, man, it's it's gonna be fun, man. It's a, it's a new day. Oh, we got some new uniforms too. Uh, let me let me bring this up. Yeah. Here, man. Let me see. Let me see if y'all can see these, man. I uh, I saw this is on social media. They uh, they said we got uh, a new gold and a new white set of uniforms. Doug, you the fashion connoisseur of the crew. Uh, you got any thoughts on on the new uh, the new duds? Uh, yeah, love them. You know, of course, the icy white is a fan favorite. Yeah, you know, white. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know you. You can rock that home or away, depending on your setup or your, or your marketing campaign there. So uh love to white it out anytime. But the guys seem to like the white out, and all the fans were, were big fans of the white unis. Uh, definitely can't go wrong with a fresh set of gold unis, man. Uh, the fit yeah, is much yeah. better. They keep improving the fit. Um, your Nike material is a first class, so you got to love that. Um, I like the lettering on them, the block, the script. Um, we, I know we had a few pundits that didn't like the script on the helmet last year, but uh, yeah, I know. It goes unno- It goes unnoticeable though, right? If if you look it's at too that small right now, <laughs> that, that, that's the point. You 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 want to notice the stuff on the side of the helmet. You, it's like it's like they got the a, a size twelve font and you have it like size twenty or whatever. But well, you I, like, I you like many others. You know, yes. had a, had a bunch of ideas and a bunch of designs that I'm sure will continue to surface <laughs> on the internet. So yeah. I love that the fans are involved and that they care about what we wear. You know, I've always said that uh, you look good, you play good. And so I, the guys seem to really embrace that. And I love the fact that, you know, we, we got everybody represented there. We got the special teams represented, defense and yep. offense right there. And so yep. everybody yep. swagged out. They got the drip. I know they said KP uh, probably had the most drip. And Mr. Warren, they, 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 <laughs> according to the team, they, those are the guys to look out for if you want to see uh, the uniform at its best. But don't sleep on Big Lawrence Legron, man. He'll slip some stuff in there on you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's he's yeah. got a lot of gloves, got a lot of – a lot of cleats in the bag. He's been here for a minute, so he stays pretty sweet too. And so he took the liberty of doing the uh, um, the, the the Ezekiel Elliott when he rolled up his 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 his, his jersey, right? <laughs> I don't know if that's uh if, if that's uh, the the team uh, uh, color uh, guidelines, but uh, you know, I guess he'll get away with. It. He's a big that's guy. That's that five hundred bench pe- bench press. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, you know? exactly. When you, when you throw up five hundred no. pounds, you can do what you. you know, I, I didn't. You know, I didn't think. I didn't. Did, did he? Did he roll it up, or does it just not fit? Because you know <laughs> he's three fifty, so you know. <laughs> no, look, look, yeah. Listen, if you go look at the practice and all the games, uh, Lawrence is intentional. <laughs> Uh, with with his uniform and his gear, man, he always got something different, and I mean, he got the visors on it, everything. But uh, it, like I said, man, c- kudos to, to the athletic department, man, putting a little money into uh, our uniforms as well as our package. I, I think the guys have two or three sets of cleats now, um, multiple bags, travel bags. I know a lot of guys like they want a hoodie thrown in there too, but uh, you know, come a long ways from just the old travel suit and the, and the duffel. You used to get a travel suit, the duffel. One pair of shorts and a shirt. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's improvement, continued improvement. So I love it. I I can dig that, man. And you know what? Don't this is my only gripe is that the the fonts on on the front are different, right? Because I know last year or the year before last, we had the the navy jersey, and that one said N C A N T S U. So that was yeah. kind of a change. And so, but now I guess we're going back to N C A N T. And the white ones have Aggies, but you know, all all in all, if the if the players like it, I love it. If they're gonna play good in it, that's all that matters. Uh, you know, I, I guess we still have the blue one in rotation. They, it's not, you know, these are the, just the newest ones, but I still we still have the, the blue one that's in rotation. And uh, I think the gray ones. I know some people got feelings about the gray ones, but I think we still have the um, the gray jerseys. And uh, those might be able to get maxed. Uh, I mean, mixed and matched with some of these combos. So you know, it's all it's all good. Yeah. So still, good. still want to see the '90s throwback uh, with the old yellow helmets, royal gotta blue jerseys. It. Gotta have you know, it. We already got the gold pants. So it's it's coming one day. I'm telling you, it's coming one day soon. We're, we're gonna rock it out. Slowly but surely. All right. So that's those are the new uniforms. And let me know what you guys think in the uh, in the chat. 
when those come out. Oh, oh, guess what? So I, I gave the call already. I gave the call and somebody's answered. Great. The, the uh, Brick Handler family, they said they got a whole sponsorship already complete, whole number five for Bricky. So hey, they go, they go, hey, listen, <laughs> if, 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 if the family of our starting quarterback can support this initiative, then we have no excuse. I think you see four more people at the very least by the end of the show. That brick handler, uh, KNC brick handler, got number five on the golf course on September the eighth in honor of their son, uh, Eli. And uh, man, I can't wait. To, uh, hey, <laughs> let's close your. I'm gonna let him have. I'm gonna let him have that, the whole number five. He, I'm gonna let him have the whole five on that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. close your eyes, Dougie. Just close your eyes and imagine what's it gonna look like. <laughs> When them boys come out of that locker room, number five leading the charge. You know how much electricity? Because he's he's like a naturally a charismatic, electric kind of person. But when when that first game of the season, and and he's, I mean, that's that's what you want, man. That's what we've been asking for. Yeah, I had that dream and and had closed my eyes and had that thought about a year ago. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have a look. We'll see. We're gonna do. We're gonna do it. Try again this year, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New a new year, new new opportunity. So that was uh, we gonna new we're gonna, era. That was one person who got that that whole sponsorship for that Hall of Fame golf tournament. I need to see some more. Um, and uh, you know, we we gonna go to our our first guest tonight because we talked to this gentleman over the weekend. Uh, and he was pretty. He was really gracious with his time. So we're gonna we're gonna play that interview now. This is our uh, new. Defensive line coach, new defensive line coach, Kennard Lane. We, we caught up with him. He has some interesting things to say about the Blue Death defense. Craig, if you want, you, you broke down the offense, but he broke down the defense. So uh, let, without, let me go ahead and bring this mm-hmm. guy up and uh, y'all tell me if y'all enjoy this. Coach Lane, what's Hello. going on? Good evening. How y'all doing this evening? Man, I'm good, coach. Living the dream. Living the dream. Hey, 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 Craig, we were just talking uh, before the show about how enthusiastic we were about this defensive line. Because, you know, from the little bit we've been able to observe it, practice, and some of the scrimmages, we boys, you know, got some bad intentions and they're flying around. Uh, so, so, Coach Lane, first of all, uh, just, just, just give me your, 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 your vision for what this defensive line is going to look like in 2023. You know what? I'm going to say, I guess the, the vision for them, I'll probably say it would be as much as their expectations and they expect a lot. Um, I guess my vision of them is no more or less being like uh, like how like how I played, how I grew up learning how to play. Play with passion and love, but most importantly, you got to be a student of the game and be a technician. So that those are, those are the, the things I really – emphasize on them on um, first off the mental mind state is going to create um, a lot of great things for if you know what to do prior to what's happening as long as you're physically able to do it then you got the technique um i think that makes you into like a little dangerous player so that's a big thing that you know if you see anything not just about the defense line be the defense what would be fundamentally sound hard nosed and we're going to be a student of the game and Craig, you this uh, past weekend, you had a chance to, to sneak in a little bit, get a little a little glimpse of that scrimmage. <laughs> T- tell, like, cause you was yeah. you called you called me on the phone. You were telling me how happy you were. Tell tell Coach Lane what you saw out there in that defensive line from, from your perspective. Uh, Coach, uh, I, I, I compliment you. Uh, you got a lot of young guys along that defensive line. Uh, yes. Probably the youngest defensive line we've had in a long time, uh, but. Uh, those young kids are really putting out effort. I saw some really good things of some of your some of your uh, kids up front. Can you can you give us some some names that uh, Aggie fans might want to keep a look out on? I guess for one that they, they were here prior that stayed with the Coach Brown regime. You got you got Janoris, who's one at defensive end. Then you got Henry Daniel, you know, who played a lot as well. And I'm um, also too, to be honest with you, we got Javon Armstrong. So, like, the good thing about, I'm saying about those guys, are those are the ones that was here previously. But the thing about it, they bought into what, what, what Coach Brown wanted, and they showed the leadership, which, which how to do it the right way. You know, how to work, shut your mouth, and go take care of business. 
you know, and stuff like that, and learn how to be a good football player. So, but those kids coming back and bonding with Coach Brown emphasize, and they bust they butt. I mean, you know, they they, they work, and like as long as yeah. you got guys like that, that can help help set the trend for what we're trying to build it as a team. And coach, you know, um, I guess a lot of been noise was made about uh, Coach Brown traditionally being a three-four defensive guy, and the previous regime ran a heavy four-three set. Was there a, a challenge from for you as a defensive line coach to kind of make any adjustments to to what the guys had previously been doing? Was, was that was that a big transition from from then no, to now? No. Um, you know what? I'll probably say a little bit in some aspects, but okay. like really. With the three four, it all really depends on how you play it. As far as like if you play three four more like with a gap scheme, it really don't make no difference. It's just like you playing a four three, you just playing on different shades of the guy. So you know, it, it, to me, it really don't matter. Either the guy gonna step inside or outside, you still gotta shoot your hands to your landmark. Where so like you know, so like to me, it's a matter of just how many guys you have on the line with the big guys, but. Retrospect defensive line is almost basically like playing a four three. You just a uh, different personnel that you have. So the teaching is really similar. Hey, well, coach, I tell you what, these guys can tell you. I love a guy and a coach that's been there and done that. And if anybody's been there and done that, you can say you've been there and done that, man. And to yes, hear sir. you speak about uh hear hear, hear you talk football talk and speak that terminology about what the three four looks like. I know uh I believe in your playing career you had a chance to transition. Um, from a, a hand hand in the dirt defensive lineman, defensive end style. Um, to I think you were standing up a little bit with the Cleveland Browns when you were under yes. Coach Romeo Cornell. So I mean, you you literally worked that transition and, and left went from one team to another and had to uh, try to uh, transition to a new position. So what are some of the things as a, as a, from a coach's standpoint is different trying to teach that change versus being a player and living that change? Um, you know what? I'll probably say the biggest. I'm gonna say really, really the, the the biggest difference. Um, I probably say knowing knowing that I played it, and when they look at me, they can honestly believe everything I say, and 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 most importantly, I be honest with them. If I know some stuff is realistic, unrealistic, I tell them. I say, you know what, I've been there. <laughs> okay, you know what I mean. And also sometimes, you know, you had that one situation might be kind of like tough. I was like, you know, you're not gonna get much of the glory. I'd be like, hey, listen, these one of the times you got to fall on the blade for the team. You know, <laughs> you got to spill two guys, spill two guys, free up the linebacker. Hey, that's just how it is because it's going to be an even trade. So you got to be looking more or less like not necessarily what I'm getting out of it, what is the team going to get out of it. So I told them if the team do successful, everybody be individually successful and reach their goal. Because at the end of the day, when you get your ring, all them individual, individual accolades, shoot, that, hey, that's for the birds, you know. It yeah. comes along with but as long as you try to reach and strive and work together with y'all and try to be a championship caliber team with the, with the good mindset, um, they, 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 they listen. So that really helps me out by them by me playing and just saying, like, hey, I, I've been there before. Just, just trust me. And when it comes to fruition, that's when the eyes really got, oh, he really is telling the truth, even though, I you know, I've been there. But – it's great to see them achieve it. Then I know I'm really doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, oh, definitely. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, by me teaching, my guess, like what Mr. Um, Craig had mentioned earlier, by us having a lot of young kids. But the good thing about it, a lot of young kids want to work to get better. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the important thing. They want to work to get better and they believe everything we're feeding them and they see it and they see it. The stuff's coming um coming to a flow. So so was that a, uh, almost a immediate buy-in you felt when 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 a new staff got a chance to introduce yourselves to the team? But that that was pretty much everyone was was ready and, and ready and willing. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Because everybody knew there's a change coming, in and you want to be part of the change that you were there. And the thing about it, what Coach Brown teach about is about everyday life. It ain't like it's something new, but. Most importantly, the expectation, what he sees and expects out of you, not just football wise, but academically wise and character wise. Most importantly, when you go home, your parents love that individual, that young man that's coming home representing their family. You know what I mean? So Coach Brown is real big on character, how you carry yourself, and he wants to see his young men graduate. So he emphasizes.
besides that, long to long to hard work, you know, is you got somebody who genuinely care about your well being. So you got a person that does that. It doesn't take hard to buy in. Hmm, awesome, awesome. And you know, and with a three four defense. When you just think about just the you know the stereotypical three four defense, you always see that one space eater, one technique. Somebody you talk, you talk about taking one for the team. Somebody who's eating up you know those those yeah. those uh those double teams or whatever. And do we you know do we do we have anybody on that roster right now that fits that traditional bill? And if not, how do we move guys around to 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 circumvent that? You see, like now we we still run a three four, but you know, you know, you're gonna do some stuff variations, you know what okay. I mean, as far as to the defense. So most importantly, I guess we're gonna put our kids in a position to be successful. So we're not gonna fit the, the kids to our scheme, we're gonna fit the scheme to our players. Ah, so gotcha. what we feel that they're successful in being the best of and produce and be for the for the team, that's how we're gonna do it. So we're not gonna try to force a square peg in the circle if we don't have to. But right. so week by week, we're gonna do what we need to do to prepare for any team that they have problems with either four, three, three, four. So but the answer to your question to get back to it, we're gonna put our kids in the best position to be successful. And see, Doug, Doug, this guy has a lot of flair. He, she's trying to be kind of humble right now, but you can kind of see a little bit of that flair come, coming out a little bit. And I, I think, Doug, I think I might know where it comes from because this guy was, was was all about the U in his playing days. He's a product of the yeah. University of Miami. So, yes. so, Doug, I know you know about the U. You know about – hey, Craig, you know about the U in the 80s, in the 90s. Yeah, so, man. So, 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 Coach Lane, talk a little bit about that coming up under uh, Butch Davis and that legendary uh hurricanes team i think i think one year it was like almost everybody on, on the every senior was in it was got drafted one year it was crazy how much talent y'all had <laughs> what was it like playing at the U? and is that type of culture you know can you bring some of that here at the greensboro because y'all had y'all y'all were nasty on defense man <laughs> you, you know what i guess because then dennis erickson recruited me out of high school and i was very mm -hmm. fortunate in high school, I only lost three games my whole high school mm -hmm. career. And, you know, we won state mm -hmm. my junior year. So when I went to go visit the University of Miami, it was like the same mindset, the same feeling, the same people. So, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, they didn't lose no game in expectation. Now, I'd probably say the biggest thing the University of Miami taught me was, like, was the expectation level. Not just out of you, but out of everybody. And you know, if you can't hone in, you can't get where you fit in, you have to get out. Cause like, it, it, was, it was just, just how it was. And and there was no, you had to have thick skin. If you can't take constructive criticism, you're not gonna last. You know what I mean? And I'll probably say I was very fortunate when my first year of playing, I played behind a guy named Darren Crine and Kevin Patrick. And Kevin Patrick is the D-line coach at South Florida now. So I remember we went out to uh, Colorado to play them, that's when they had Cordell Stewart, Rashawn Salam, oh, Charles man. Johnson, Ted yeah. Johnson. Mm -hmm. They had a nice little wow. stick. But and but in doing that, now my first year, watching them play against them, where like you just see the just the tenacity, just just the just just the grit, you know what I mean, out of those guys. And Dwayne Johnson was on the team at war. So then, you know, once I started playing, it was like it was kind of already built in. What you do, we go we go to a bowl game January first. So let that it ain't January first, it, 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 that that's not good enough. And and just and just trying to just that mentality where I was more I was more scared of disappointing my teammate to disappoint myself. I don't want to sit there and watch film and my teammate look at me like I got a big booger hand from my nose. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> why is he why is he on the field? <laughs> I mean, if I did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, to me, that, that, that's the worst feeling that you can have yeah. as a competitor, period. And that's what, like, University of Miami, like, you know what, what a lot of people don't know, I'm going to top it off with this. I played baseball at University of Miami. I got drafted. Wow. So, oh, didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I, what, so what position, that, Coach, what, what position? I, 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 outfield, outfield on first base. Good. Okay. And so you can swing that bat a little bit too. Huh? Excuse me. I said I said you can swing that bat a little bit too. You had a little swing on you. 
I put on those show now. And it wasn't okay. Uh, oh, man. It wasn't That's impressive. Uh, <laughs> but uh, right. but I guess like, I guess the more to the story as far as by the expectation like the University of Miami. Well, I was in the baseball locker room. The first day I went there, you know, I got in my locker and I went to the bathroom. So I looked at the door stop. You know what the door stopper for the bathroom was? It was the runner-up trophy for the national championship. That was the door stopper. That's a visual right there, man. That's a visual. And that sets the tone for the whole, for everybody. That sets the tone for everybody. Exactly. And that's how, like, a lot of the mindset happens, which really is, is what you, what you, what you see and everybody push in that environment, that culture of what you wanted to be and how to win. So, like, that, that kind of got put in me since then, and I just like to just roll with it. And, and what was it like playing uh, alongside Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock? Now, what, what was he like in college? Oh, like, like how he is on TV? He is a fool. <laughs> <laughs> he was funny. <laughs> funny. Real funny. <laughs> but, and like, it's crazy that you say that because that year, out of that same defensive line, we had, like, the number one defense in the nation. And total yards, third down, and like red zone points. Oh, Warren Sapp played beside me. We both from the same hometown in Orlando. He from a popular. He drafted and went first round. The defensive tackle beside him, he blew his knee out against Pittsburgh. He was the first pick in the second round from the Bears. Then the defensive being on the other side, he went right behind me. He first round pick to the all um, to the Tennessee Titans. So that was like our defensive line. Then my recruiting class, we had like five first round picks. We on your Teal Green, Ray Lewis, mm-hmm. Dwayne Starks. Oh goodness. Oh it's just it uh <laughs> shoot, there's a couple other people. But it don't but sound it don't one, sound real Craig. Craig, it don't sound real, do it? it, it yeah, like I, I can't up. imagine. I can't Man, that's, that's crazy. I, I can't all, imagine all those that. guys. In Jeez. one locker room, in one football facility. That don't make sense, but, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the great thing about it though, everybody got treated the same. There was no there was no big chief. Everybody was Indian. So like for me getting cussed out to the next person, Ray Lewis or Warren Sapp or Rohan Marley, or you know what I'm saying, or, or Ken Hope, like that. What I'm saying yeah. is everybody was treated as equal. Nobody was better than the next guy. But the good thing about it, though, it was the encouragement. Like, you know, you might mess up on a play. Hey, you messed up. You know, you might come back. Hey, man, you know what? This next play, you, you owe me, So make up for it. It was that kind of family feel we had that we really took heed to each other. That was like the love we had. Cause we really got to believe each other and, and really just want to be champions. You said name, man, Rohan Marley. So <laughs> people might not realize a little trivia thing. He ended up being the... Uh, Baby father to Lauren Hill, right? Ro- 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 yes, Ro- I Walsh. think you're yeah. like four or oh, yeah. five. Okay. Or yeah, he, he had mm-hmm. a couple kids at Lauren Hill, and uh, you know, that, that's a little fun fact for all you uh, music lovers out there. But <laughs> I, it, it just shows you the star power that was on those U- University of Miami teams. And I'm assuming y'all gonna try to have that thing in Greensboro eventually because uh, you know, you out here on the recruiting trail, talk a little bit about some of the attributes and some of the guys you're trying to recruit to you know, bring into that next uh, level, that blue depth defense. You know, you guys got, uh, you know, your own way of doing things, but how, what, what type of guys do y'all identify to, to, to play a defensive line of a and Um, You know what? I, I guess since we were in the, like, like most of them, like, just like normal kids, like big athletic kids who, I guess it fits the position that you're looking for. You're looking for a three, four tackle, or, you know, I mean, student looking for a defensive tackle where like now scheme, I got three, four tackle, real like a four, three tackle. They are really where you place them. So it's real almost the same thing. And most importantly, I guess like the, the kind of caliber in where we're very fortunate. We just got to commit on, on you know, we just got a kid that um, committed to us. And we look for him to um, do, do, do big things for us. So, you okay. know, he's a nice ass kid, but, you know, going from there, we try to get kids that fit the scheme that, that we're trying to do. So best available, but most importantly, I'll probably say known experience that Coach Brown has and the stuff that he know being an all pro, you know, a uh, defensive player. Then my I guess my mindset of me playing football for the for a lot while 
And the good thing that really helps, though, is the tradition, the rich tradition of A&T. Okay, okay, so that really helps out a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know if I, I I'm going to say it, but like me, I'm from Florida, originally Orlando, and everybody in my house rappers. Okay, so you can't Oh, come on now. Business, <laughs> come on now. Come on. Hey. hey. So, <laughs> he can't help it. Ah, I mean, because the reason why I brought that up, because yeah. growing up, you know, I went to all the games, but the main yeah. game was, was two games, South Carolina State and a &T. Those were the two games. Right. Those were family, two toughest games every besides the classic. a &T, right. South Carolina State was always the tough two teams. So I remember a &T back when I was growing up. Wow, but man, good, but yeah. So coming here, you still see like what I saw the, the, the genuine love and everybody here support the Aggies. Most importantly, you got kids like you know, my mom and dad went there, so you know what? I want to go there too. Yep, yep. So, so that really helps on the NT aspect of it with the kids. Then, you know, we got the coaches who've who been there and uh, who kind of know what they're talking about. Coach Brown, we also got a defensive coordinator. And the, and the other coaches like Coach Henry, who's been around the way for a while. Yeah. So yeah. you got good quality guys like that. And with the mix of A and T, most importantly, the top flight education that they have here that that's that's number one at HBCU. So that that all those good qualities and stuff right there, it helps out a lot with bringing the kind of players we want here. Hey, hey, Craig, Craig, I think that mm -hmm. uh, Coach Brown, you know, he's talking about when he put together his staff, right? Because uh, I think we got yeah, a absolutely. Here, Coach Lane. You got a great. Uh, I, I, it's a tremendous staff, and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, the more Coach Lane keeps talking, the more I want to come out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, won't be breaking any for you times. You have to clock <laughs> me with a sundial. So, but, uh, but yeah, Coach, uh, uh, I, I see great. I, I, I like what I saw out there uh, at practice this past weekend, and. Um, it, uh, I think we're going. I think we're going to surprise some people. I think. I think we really are. Yes, uh, you know what I did too. And like you know, the expectation that we have on ourselves. So you really compete against yourself, not making the silly mistakes, not doing the things to get self-inflicted wounds. Because we know that's the real big part of the game. You take the self-inflicted wounds out, you increase your chances of winning by eighty some percent, 80, 85 percent. So in doing that. Y'all gonna have each other self in the game. So, and I just want my kids, you know, I told them y'all just play hard. I said, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the people writing the paper think about you. It's that guy that walked across the um, field and shake your hand and say, hey man, you kick my butt. <laughs> you do that, hey, you, you, you know you're putting in work. And I told them that's all you need to worry about. Everything else will come later. Hey, Doug, Doug, so you, you're a former a &T player. If one, if your position coach was not only you know a product of a story program like University of Miami, but also a ten had a ten year career in the NFL with stops in like Washington, Cleveland, and Denver, that's going to make you have a little more belief in what he's teaching, right? That's that's oh, absolutely, ability. man. Absolutely. First of all, like you said, you're going to pick coach's brain all the time, man, and you want to be in his hip pocket, and you just want all that knowledge and that experience to pour out, and so you can absorb some of it up, but. Uh, what I like most about coach is that he, he's a, he's approachable, you know, he, he's friendly, he's accessible. And so when you got a coach like that, you know, the, your kids aren't scared of you. They're not, they're, they're not afraid to make a mistake or afraid how coach is going to respond to it. Now, they again, like you said, they don't want to let coach down, uh, but it's nice to have to, to be able to draw that line and say, this is coach, but I also can count on coach as a friend, as a mentor, and someone I can, I can count on because everybody not from down the street like me, right? I'm <laughs> from Greensboro. <laughs> You know, I knew all the coaching staff when I got here, but it, there's some guys, and we talk about Janoris, you know, he's from Florida. So, you know, like, yeah. we, we always follow the kids when they get here, and uh, we try to mm. provide a support system and just know that there's some guys here they can count on. But there's nothing more important than being able to count on your coach. And, and that's what I've noticed um, just in your little in your little time that you've been here, the short time you've been here, man, the guys that have seen to really respond to you, heard nothing but good things about you. And, you know, most of them are probably too young to remember your playing career, but you make sure they turn on that tape or check out some of those clips so they can see how talented you are and how athletic you were, man. That's that's one of those things I, I don't think of. You know, you lose some of that athleticism, and you can't always show kids that. But, man, you got you got videos and pictures you can still pull up. I think there's a picture floating around of you jumping over somebody. 
pursuing the yeah. ball or, or with the ball in your hand, man. I was like, that's phenomenal, man. So to hear that you play baseball as well, I mean, no, those are all attributes that, that your your players can look up to and say, man, coach knows what he's talking about. Again, he's been there, but man, he's also a hell of an athlete. And and that 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 alone will allow kids to just to, just to follow your lead. So I'm happy yeah. about that you're here, man. We're excited about your um your coaching career and and this being your first stop at ANT. But uh, we're we're really excited about some of the things that you we think you're going to experience this year um, as part of this staff. Um, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. You know, hey, everybody told me about how the first game be, and they told me about <laughs> and all that stuff and everything. Yeah. So, I was, okay, cool. Hey, I like those two games, but I want to get the mother, mother nine. So they take care of the mother one. You know what I mean? Go yes, sir. One at a time, and yeah, I'm looking forward to a, to a great season, but. To piggyback what you said, though, that's why I said, like, with guys like Janoris, and you had Henry, and you got Javon, and you got guys who've been there prior, and they come there, and you see them come to work every day, and they really want to get better, that that helped make my job so much easier. Because I know those kids really want to work, and they want to get better, and they really setting, I guess, how they say, the benchmark on the expectation that we want. And so you know you got the guys who play who do that. You got no choice but to follow lead, and, and that's a good thing about it. we got a whole bunch of good kids who really want to work and get better, you know, and want to be a better person. So that that's the real positive thing that's happening. Yeah. A quick question: How did you and uh, Coach Brown first cross paths? I mean, did he pick your name out of a phone book or something? Like, how did y'all work together? What what's the connection <laughs> on you and Coach Brown? Well, shoot, like, I don't know a lot of people know. So I used to be a head high school football coach for 12 years in Orlando. Okay. So, I, yeah, so I was a head coach for a while, and during that time, he was at the University of Virginia. And mm -hmm. I was a head coach at a school called Jones High School. It's the only, uh, it was the first black in the, in the um, inner city school that the blacks went to in Orlando, Jones High School. So okay. I was the head coach there. And Coach Brown, you know, came around recruiting, and that's the first time I met him. That was like, goodness, like 2010 or something like that, probably. Wow. 2010, 2011. And um, he said he and he saw how, how I had how I managed my kids, how I, I was organized, how I had stuff in order, and, and how the kids behaved when they was around me, how they approached. So he said that was one of the first things that really kind of caught his eye. And every program I had was consistent with that. And that was like one of the qualities that he really liked. No, he knew what he, I guess probably say he knew I can play and coach, but more or less that aspect of it was really to help make his decision with me as far as how to handle the kids and how and my expectation of behavior. So Coach Brown, but beyond besides his other attributes, he's a great judge of character. Because he because I think he got the right one by, by bringing you on here. I think you'll make it, I think you're gonna make an immediate difference, man. Like I um, don't you know? Like I said I, I love. I, I'm an ANT historian, so I love our previous regime we had here, um, yeah. and, and and their version of the Blue Devil defense. But it's always good to have a fresh set of eyeballs on things. I think you know, it's give you know, give you kind of have put your you know, renew it and, and, and put your own new spice on it. And this 2023 Blue Devil defense and that defensive line, I think the sky's the limit. But, but you know what? You you make an impact. You're gonna make an impact on the football field on the sidelines. But you've been making an impact in the community. Way before the end, like the last probably two decades, I heard you got this thing called the uh, Canard Lane Foundation, where you you uh, reach out to underprivileged kids and also to serve the whole community uh, throughout the year. Tell me a little bit about that foundation you got set up. On um, the Canard Lane Foundation, that that started back I probably say 2003 because my grandfather he died of prostate cancer. So I said, oh, you know what? Okay. He, so, and I saw the toll that I put on my parents and everything, my mom and my dad, and like, you know, you know, it hit different for me when I, when I, when my, saw my mom, she was in my homeboy arms and she started crying because my grandfather passed. So, the reason why it's weird, because I'm always seeing my mom crying my dad on. If I started crying my best friend on, I really saw the hurt in the eyes that really kind of like, okay, you know what I mean? Whatever I can kind of do to help where nobody was going to feel this way no more. You know, so be it. So it kind of started from that point. Now we give away like ten um fifteen hundred dollars scholarship once a year. We have a charity golf event. Uh we have back to school shopping, we have Christmas shopping, we do Thanksgiving baskets, 
So Thanksgiving bats, we probably feed around like say close to 80 families. Um, the, the cancer unit, we go to Christmas time. We see kids from infants for two months to sometimes kids who are teenagers. So the main thing we do with them, we team up with Olive Garden. We provide them um, lunch. And we bring them presents, you know, also feed the oh. mom and dad and them. So, you know, yeah. let them know yeah. everybody keep watching. And probably this, we know it's tough, dude. And you know that you know somebody love you and praying for. That's that's the that's that's the main thing out of that. And I've been working at a place called Base Camp, who I've been this where we kind of work together each year. We always donate them money as far as helping with the kids with cancer. So that's kind of a big little mission um that we that I've been doing. So we've been doing that for the last 20 years now. And we gave back over over half a million dollars back to the community. Woo, so, okay. So you know, y'all not playing mm -hmm. around. Y'all 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 out there with your sleeves rolled up. Y'all ten toes down, making a difference, right in the community. Does that serve just uh, mostly like the Florida, Orlando, Florida area, or is that uh, how, what's, your See, out, what's your outreach like? So, like when I first started, wherever city I played at, that's why okay. I did a lot of my Christmas functions. But yeah. also, two people from that state was able to apply for the scholarship. So, okay. and nice. saying that now, so saying that now, I'm like I, like here in Greensboro, so it's probably the same way. They can apply for our scholarship. You know, we give out scholarships in Orlando, so it's a big deal. Like the whole state of Florida, Asbury, Central Florida, where I'm yep. from, and also I'm working at. So kids here can also apply for. You know, who know? You know, you might get a chance to win you all some scholarship money. So I hear you. Nice. And, and what's yes. and what's the website? What's the what's the contact information to to get a part to find out more about that foundation? Um, it's on it's on canarlingfoundation.org. And okay. the contact number is area code 321-228-1816. Okay. So 321-228-1816. So it's been real cool. And the NFL also has a big deal with also where they contribute back a lot and also Target. So Target and the NFL um, um, Foundation are real big supporters and backers of, of my foundation where they help out a lot, big time. Okay. okay. So we're going to have to try to find out how we can help out and link up from Blue Death Valley because uh, we, we consider ourselves like the number one fan site for A&T football. So we're going to try to uh, in, in, uh, yeah. educate our fans on what you got going on and, and, and build a connection. Um, so but lastly, uh, Craig, Doug, y'all y'all want to, uh, any other questions we got before we let this man go? So he's busy trying to put a game plan together for, for <laughs> UAB. <laughs> Coach, we always ask former players, uh, uh, what is what is your uh, most memorable moment as a player and during your playing career? And that's either in college or NFL in your case. You know, you know what? I'll I, I probably say, wow, the most memorable moment. If anything, I'll probably say, hear my name called and go see it across the bottom of that screen when I got drafted. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I probably say don't want to lose my memorable moments as far as that aspect and and looking at that and, and seeing some of you know place I wanted to go. I gotta find a chance to make it there, make the best of my building. My mom was there, my dad, my aunt, my uncle. So that was probably a real big moment. Just just watching that and everybody start cheering because I had a chance to share happiness with everybody. You know what I mean? Just I'm I'm I'm, I'm a person I like I like I'm a positive vibe guy. Yeah, so I want I my tell. people around me, the love, the yeah. stuff I feel I can give. If y'all can share it and give me the same time, all oh, let's enjoy it together. And so that go. was probably a wonderful thing. Good deal. Go ahead, Craig. You were, you were saying? Well, I, I was just going to say, uh, uh, Coach Lang, we got, uh, uh, I'm sure since you've been here, you heard about the, you've heard and witnessed the rivalry between uh, A&T and North Carolina Central. What? What what kind of ag what what kind of as a new Aggie as a new Aggie what, what, what how are your feelings on on that rivalry with uh with the buzzards from down eighty five? You know what? Hey, I know one thing. I know who signed my check. Number one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> so in saying that, it's, it's you know it's a it's a backyard rival right down the street. So you know it's a personal. It's gonna be a little tough. It's gonna to be a tough game, but uh, you know we gotta worry about this game first coming up UAB. Right, right. But but uh, but that game, everybody, I've been hearing about it. 
as far as like how personal it is. I remember how it went last year at the mm. um down in Carolina. So sure. I know the I know the kids want to change that the whole school, but we want to, we gonna worry about Birmingham first. Then we then we come in here and we take care of business um like we need to. There you go. All right, we're gonna be we're gonna be watching. We're gonna be ready, and we're gonna be rooting for you. Uh, you're an easy guy to root for, man. I'm just uh, yeah. Real, real uh, charismatic, uh, charismatic pers personality, and I'm like, like Craig said, I, I'm juiced up now because I, because I know, I know the guys gonna be fired up when they run out on that field um, a couple Thursdays from from tonight. Um, so go ahead, coach, get back to that film room, keep on breaking down uh, yes, that, that game film, find a way we can get to that quarterback. Uh, but thank you so yes. much also for for, for responding because, like I say, man, you, I, I hit you on Twitter. And I was surprised. He's like, "Yeah, when? What do you want to do it?" I'm like, well, hold on a second. Are you are you reading this correctly?" I asked you to be on our podcast. He's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm down." I'm like, "Okay, that's that's, that's that's different." So so you understand the Blue Death Valley uh, concept. You understand inside the valley. That, that, that already shows you you're a smart guy because you you pick it up. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, now, obviously we, we really support you. And uh, man, man, I tell you, let's, let's let's go ahead and have a great season. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. And, you know, hey, hopefully we take care of our thing this year and, and we'll be in the playoffs trying to make that run. But, you know, I take one game at a time and faith of a mustard seed, which I know we do. We'll make it there. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. until next time, man. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. All right, no problem. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you, Pride. Thanks, Coach. Oh, you're welcome. So that, that was Coach Lane, guys. And uh, I told you we had a good one. That was a good interview we had with him. Um, he's, man, like I said, I don't know how you can listen to him and not be motivated <laughs> to run through a wall. That dude has so much electricity, so much charisma, and he has Craig. That dude, he, man, he has the, the credibility. He's been where we're trying to go. Uh, play the University exactly. of Miami, play the University of Miami. And he was a 10-year veteran in the NFL. That's not easy to do. Uh, and he was a successful yeah. high, high school coach. Yeah. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, he's, he, he, is, he, he kind of reflects what is, uh, reflects a lot of the guys on the coaching staff. Uh, they were all successful players uh, on the college level, and quite a few of them went on to the professional ranks and had great careers and. Even had, and, and and transferred that even into their uh, stints as college coaches, uh, both at the FBS and FCS programs. But they all been around championship teams, uh, and been part of championship teams, either playing on them or coaching them. And it's, it's kind of like I said, you know, last week. I think that I think coaching going into this first year in the CAA is going to be huge. I think it's really going to be huge, and I think people will see that uh, as we go along into the season, uh, because uh, uh, you know, a lot of folks were saying, well, you, you know, you, a &T, they, 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 you know, they got rid of all their coaches, and they, they don't know what they're doing all like this. They know, uh, I got, a &T knew exactly what they were doing when they, when they, uh, when they uh, put this coaching staff together, so uh, I, I can't wait for I can't wait for Thursday. Doug, what was your big takeaway from that interview, man? What what was the main thing you took away from that? Well, I mean, you heard it, man. He's he's got it done at all all levels, man. High school, college, NFL. He's a wealth of knowledge, um, and and again, to be a, a college kid and have access uh, to some of the information and some of the connections that coach provides, uh, just aside from the football knowledge. Uh, and that's kind of what you want for your kid. You know, if I was sending my child to school to play football, that's the kind of guy you want him to go play for. And, um, you know, he seems very yeah. excited to be here. I know those guys are looking at the chops. Um, but hardworking guy, you know, dedicated. Those guys are going to do what it takes to get us, like you said, in the right positions. Um, and they're going to put the work in. So I'm excited one game at a time. It's like watch, waiting for a highly anticipated movie, right, to come out. You know what date is coming out. You can't wait to go see it. I know. You know it's it, like, yeah, it, you're right. You're right. It's, it's exactly going to be a long is. movie, right? It's going to be a long movie, uh, you know, because we got a long season ahead of us, but it's exciting, man. And, and just we're going to take it one game at a time. And um, I don't know that I've ever been more excited for uh, a new staff and, and just a new era to come in and get things started. So here we go. 
All right, so we on the road, guys. We on the road. Go ahead. Some let's predict this. I, I want the, the people uh, in the chat and, I, and guys. I, I just put the link to the show. We're gonna be here for about twenty five more minutes. So if you want to uh, join us and have a conversation real quick, uh, click that link. But um, check this out. We're gonna be on the road Thursday night. What uniforms are we gonna wear? Because we got a couple more options now, right? So 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 Craig, what do you think <laughs> is going? What we gonna what we gonna roll out with in our first game of twenty twenty three? What's your prediction? Uh, yeah, UAB usually wears all green uh, and uh, and gold helmets, so I suspect we will probably we'll probably go with the whites. We'll probably all go with the, with the with the all Ooh. whites. So we're gonna begin the Coach Brown era with the icy whites. Doug, that, that yeah, I would, I'd, from, from head to toe. Um, like Craig said, you're the away team. More than likely, UAB will hit you with the green combination, home darks. Yeah. Uh, it's August, and it's hot. <laughs> it's going to be Alabama. Right. So right. advantage, Ag, is you want to wear your light colored or your, your all-white if you can. Uh, we have had success with the early season game rocking uh, the golds in, in white pants before down against Jacksonville State. So that's always an option, right, if you, you want to save your, your icy white. Um, you're only traveling 60, I believe. So, Oh, really? I don't think you won't travel 90, a little more than 60. I don't think we won't travel uh, you, your full team on away game. I don't believe. Oh, um, man. See, I don't know. It's not a conference. It, I don't know the conference, how the conference is set up. This is a non conference game. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. technically, you could travel a few, but uh, I guess that'll be coach's decision. But, um, you know, if you want to save the all whites, break them out later, you can. If you, you want to bust them out on the Thursday night opening game, you can too. I, I don't know if the coach, if the kids get a say so in it or if that decision's already been made, but, um, <laughs> It's nice to have options, man. It's nice to have options. We came a long way, man. We came a long way, but I'm going to uh, shoot for an all-white combination just to uh, keep us nice and cool down there. All-white. I can dig the icy white, man. You know, um, I kind of I like the icy whites for, um, you know, those those uh, Celebration Bowl games, man, when we was going out there. We had if we had to be, you know, we was always there. So one, so one, one year we'd be home, one we, one year we'd be away. But if it was, if it fell on a, on a year when we were the away team, there was nothing that gave us whack fear, like seeing us come out icy whites. Man, it was just that was, that was, I remember what was, what was the last time we were there? Was that the two thousand and good Lord, 19, was, that the, was that the eighteen? I think it was eighteen. Eighteen. That was, uh, 18. Yeah, that, that was yeah. the Mars last year when we uh when we uh okay, beat yeah, Alcorn yeah. second time. That was icy whites. But yeah, man, that's this it's going down, guys. And uh I say I'm I'm I might like try to make out on Fun Fest. Uh I know it's gonna be kinda hot out there. And I, you know, Saturdays ain't, ain't the best days for me right now. But uh, I'm gonna try to come out to the stadium and check it out, see what they got going on. Um, oh, that, that was talking so, talking about early season games. Where there's a lot of cramping. My, my guy Dominique Doc over there at A and T, one of the, you know, he leads that training staff over there at A and T. He told me that one of the, the secrets that you can do to avoid cramping early in the season is uh, eat pretzels, salty pretzels. So that for all you young athletes out there, y'all still you know in the dog days of of summer and in, in, in uh, August or whatever. Go ahead and uh, get you like a little bag of pretzels and eat that on the on the bus trip to the game. That might give you some 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 energy not to, to cramp up. So that's another thing. But uh, yeah, Craig, man, this is just going down. Uh, so so look, you you your preview for the offense, uh, anti offense. That's on the site right now. 2023 preview. We talked to Coach Lang about that defensive line. He talked a little bit about, about the defense. Um, the missing piece, I guess, is the special teams, man. It's I know you're gonna you're gonna break that down, but uh is there mm -hmm. any other nuggets on that front that you can kind of give us a little preview on on, on that special team? Is there anything to look out for? Um, our return game should be pretty good. Um okay. you'll have Taymon Cook and uh, uh uh Aaron Harris uh right. appear to be the first line guys as far as uh uh, returning kits, but uh, Demonte Jones, I think that's Dud's boy. Uh, Demonte, that's him. Demonte <laughs> Jones, yeah. He's, uh, his, uh, He's troubling. He, he puts that three on. <laughs> Look out. Look out for my boy. <laughs> yeah. 
he is uh, he 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 can be electric uh, in the return game, and we saw that last year against South Carolina State. Uh, he took one back. Of course, he got called back for a holding penalty, which nobody seemed to see, but but the <laughs> official who threw the flag. Right. Uh, but you know, uh, don't have any C and I dogs out there on the field. So, <laughs> but uh, but the kid can the, the guy can fly. Uh, he's he's really tough. So yeah, I uh, special teams is going to be really good. I, you know, you got Caleb uh, Brickhouse uh, doing the punting, and uh, if you if you see him punt, he's he's getting like five and a half second hang time on you know forty. 41, 45 yard kicks. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, he just, he, he just, yeah. He's just not a guy who's going to boom it. He's like a specialist because I remember he was telling us that he he participated in a competition, like a skills competition, and they had like who kicked it the farthest, who can hit, kick it the highest and, and stay in the air, and like who can do like the coffee corner. So he knows all the tricks of the trade when it comes to punt. Yeah, if you get five second hang time, you're not going to get a whole lot of punts running back. You're going to yeah. get a lot of fair catches. Uh, uh, the big, I think the, I think the one thing, the only thing that, the only thing that, uh, uh, the only thing that we, they'll be different is uh, Andrew Brown, Money Brown, uh, will uh, is coming off that, coming off that knee surgery, and uh, so I, he's, uh, I don't think he'll be, I don't think he'll start the season at, uh, start the season as our, our number one place kicker. But keep an eye on a guy by the name of uh, Owen Daffer, transfer in here from um, uh, East Carolina. Uh, yeah. Daffer back in 2021 was first team uh, all AAC down there for ECU. Uh, he's knocked down some game winners. Um, he had a big one. He had a big one. I think it was like 54, 55 yards to win it with no time against Navy. The guy could kick. Um, and so, it, you know, but we got, you know, we'll have new holders. So you, you're going to have to, you know, hopefully we get that down. Uh, we, we're, we're really good. Uh, we're really good with, uh, 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 what's it? Ruddy and, uh, 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 Jackson, Jackson at, 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 at your, yeah, at the long snapper. So I long snapping, is not going to be an issue. So it's really going to come down to the holders. Uh, and the, uh, and, uh, but we've got some, we got some kids that can uh, fill in the gap. And, uh, we pulled in a, uh, another kicker for uh, another young man from, uh, came up here from Johnson C. Smith, who's a, will be a sophomore, uh, good young kicker and a, a kid from, uh, kid from out of Maryland is really, really good, uh, really good potential coming in as a true freshman. But Daffer, I think is, Daffer, I think is, 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 he he and he and Andrew Brown. I, I wish I, I would wish that Andrew Andrew's one hundred percent healthy because that would be a dog fight to see who would be that place kicker. Because they're both those guys. They got range and they got they got a lot of leg. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna. Be, I think we're gonna be okay. Gonna be good on that. So Daffer, you say he has a couple of game winners on his belt. That always makes a difference because you know. Those kickers, man, they, they yeah. so they, they head cases, you know, they gotta they gotta be confident. And so you know, I mean that's that, that's called what it is, man. And so and so but, but once, you, once you know, once you have evidence that you can perform in the moment, it fuels you so much more. So that's good to know we got somebody with some skins on the wall when it comes to kicking game winners and uh you know that's a that's a high pressure. You know, position. you know what else it does having yeah. a full kicking room and guys that can multiple guys that can kick aside from the competition. It takes the stress off our guys' legs, right? When you're the kicker, you got to kick all the balls in practice. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, you and kick balls. Kick, yeah. Right? yeah. And so at some point in the year, that leg gets a little tired, right? You're right. You That's know, a good point. That's a good point. I, I think it was one game last year, you know, Money Brown, we, it was a game we won and dominated. Money Brown was kicking the whole game, right? It was late in the season. It was like, man, he had the toughest day out of anybody where our punter didn't get any work that game. So. You know, those things happen. Might have been other year uh, against Edward Waters other year. One of those games. But anyway, you, it, it takes the pressure off those guys. They don't have to kick every kick. They can spread it around during practice, right? Save those legs, save those reps. Hopefully you have a fresher kicker yeah. down the road. Yeah. But get well, Money Brown. That's my guy, man. 
He'll be back soon. And, and I and I've been hearing from uh, some of the players too that the new this new coaching staff they actually coach the special teams a little bit differently than we've done before. So they you know these guys ain't just kind of like playing yeah. uh, you know I declare war with the thumbs and you know doing practice. They, they they everybody has a rhyme or reason and like the whole practice period they're broke they're doing different like, you know the kickers and the specialists and the holders they got something going on. Nobody's just sitting around waiting and uh, you know it's just it's, it's it's, everybody has laser focus. And I think, uh, who was it? Last week we had uh, uh, McDaniels on, and he said he was, you know, he just he just played last year, and he was taken aback. He was surprised by just how much they were getting out of the practice session, by just reorganizing some things and, and you know, prioritizing some of, some of their, their drills. So, um, man, man. And, and that's and that's my whole thing, man. That's I, and, I, and I'll I'll kind of go on a my my little soapbox here, but we need that throughout the whole university. We need that throughout the whole athletic department. We need that through, throughout the whole fan base, right? We need that on bluedeathlet.com. You sometimes it it helps us to get a fresh perspective, a fresh. You don't you don't have to you don't have to you know fire everybody or or you know just t- totally throw out what you had. But just kind of step to the side and bring in some additional people. Say, hey, how do you look at this? How, how do you see this? I've been seeing this for 30 years this way. Do, do, do you have a different take on it? And I think that just having Coach Brown with a different perspective and then Coach Z, Coach Jay-Z, Hove, his perspective, and then Chris Young on the offensive side, they're going to look at this a t football, you know, the, 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 the whole question mark of what is a t football and they're going to have a different answer. And it might be similar in a lot of ways to what the previous coaches had, but I guarantee it's going to be some things that are different. And that's the fun thing about it. Duh, you said, you know, you're so excited. That's the what, how, you know, every every opportunity presents a, a, a chance to, to solve a question, you know, solve a problem, you know. How are they going to solve the problem their way? And we're going to find out Thursday night, man. Thursday night we're going to see it. Um is the game going to be on any type of national TV, Craig? Because I, I did not research that. ESPN, ESPN, ESPN 3. So ESPN 3. We yeah, be on ESPN 3. Good deal. So I'll be glued to that. Um, and, uh, man, everybody who's driving down there, man, just should, – should we tell them, to, should they wear gold? Is there you – know, should we wear white? We, we, got, we got to find out. I'm going to ask – I'm going to go to the press conference on, on Monday. And I'm going to try to find out. I want, I want them to tell us what, what, what's the uniform because I would like, if it's white, now check this out. If it's white, imagine all the A&T fans wearing white in the crowd. So we can we can have like our own little white out in Birmingham, you know. So if that's if that's a possibility, i like to know. We can tell the fans to go down there because, you know, I think we're going to have a nice contingent in Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah, uh, uh, I can tell you from, from, the, from the ticket part of it, uh, we've got – um, there's two sections where the uh, A&T, uh, where the A&T contingent is, they've marked off for A&T, uh, uh, for, for A&T fans and the band. So all that's going to be in, in, a, in, in, I think it's section 131 and 132. Uh, that's where the A&T uh, designated visitor section is for this game. So, yeah, if, if, if we do go white, uh, it, would, it will stand out on TV. It will it will definitely stand out on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just just as a programming note, we were uh, supposed to have another guest this week, uh, one of the, the young guys who does the social media for ANT. But he had a last minute scheduling conflict. But he was no, he wants he definitely wants to come back to the valley. He knows he knows what we're all about. He's a young guy. Doug said he might uh he he, he kind of reminds you. Of, uh, he, he kind of reminds you of me. You say like a, he's like a young, <laughs> a, a young BT. Oh, that's, that's, oh that's, that's no! What Doug, oh that's no! What Doug said. That's what Doug said. He's like he's a oh, BT. Oh, 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 young man, I won't do that today. Yeah, yeah really. Oh, he got a lot of sound. <laughs> hey, he's gonna oh, kill his career before he gets started, man. No, <laughs> man. That, but I'm telling you, I was when I was 20 when we started this bad boy. So I was it was 1999. I forgot how old I was, but uh, yeah, man, we we when we was on Miac fans back in the day. Mm-hmm. 
this is you, you were still in high school, Doug. It was me and Craig, boy, we was going to war. You don't understand about the, the smack wars <laughs> of, of the late 90s and early 2000s, 2000s against you know, you, everybody talks about JSU now with, with coach, you know, after Coach Prime left and all that. JSU, they were they were a different animal back in the 90s. Um, and then FAMU and Howard was up. Grambling was up. So everybody was up. That was like the, the golden age of black college football. And me oh, yeah. and Craig and a, and, a, and, a, and a select few of others were in that private forum and, and be at fans.com. We were going to war. That's, that's, <laughs> woo, that was some days, man. Yeah, that's, how, <laughs> hey, that's how we made our bones, though. That's how that's how the legend yeah, began. Sure. Turner, Aggie won. That's how the legend began, man. Back, back in, those, in, the, in, the, in the trenches back then. But uh, yeah, so 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 uh, we're gonna try to reschedule our other guests later on in the season. Coach Z, we got we got Coach Z. He gave us he gave me a firm commitment that when things kind of slowed down for him, right now he was want to focus on uh, you know, finishing up fall camp. But when things kind of got a little slower pace, some point maybe a bye week or something, he loves he loves the the, uh, the the platform we have. He wants to come on the show. You know, we already had Coach Brown when he when he first announced that he was you know becoming the coach. So I'm sure we can get him back in. And uh, we got to get Craig, Craig. Craig, I want to find out about this Chris Young guy. I, I, you told me about him. I've been reading about him. Yeah. Uh, we're going to see his, you know, what I his think, philosophy I think fans, is. they're going to like him. We, I'm going to have to. They're going to like him. I, I, I'm I think AT fans going to like him. I'm going to have to find <laughs> out. Get, get away here and get him on the show because I want to pick his brain. I know he has a lot of great uh, ideas about ANT football and how to move the ball. But, uh, yeah, man. So uh, uh, let me see. Do, 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 do. Got some questions here in the audience. Anybody know what happened to Elijah Bowick? Saw him earlier, but now he's not on the roster. That's always a bad thing. When, when you're a week out from the first game of the season and your name was on the football roster, yeah, we, we, got a, we got some uh, – <laughs> Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> Uh, you heard anything about that, uh, Craig? Any uh, anything we, we can announce or report on? Anything? Uh no, I'll I'll, I'll I, I've got a suspicion, but I'll I'll I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything about it. Uh, the uh, you know it is what it is. You know, guys, some guys for for whatever reason, you know, they they they're not on the roster uh, for 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 this. Uh, you know, not on the on the roster of thing. And I'll leave it as that. Okay. Well, I, I don't have no shame. And so I'll, I'll ask that question Monday at the press conference. So, uh, <laughs> DC, don't worry. I'm, I'll, if they give me the mic, that, that'd be one of the questions I ask. Where's Elijah Bowie? Because he, he was part of the, you know, the puzzle, right? We, we were looking forward to seeing him, uh, you know, uh, do some big things. He caught that touchdown pass a couple years ago. In the end zone against Central, and uh, it's been kind of quiet <laughs> since. But uh, you know, he has a lot of upside. So uh, we'll we'll find out for you, DC. Uh, another thing, was reading these comments before we get off of here. I think we have somebody else who donated. Oh yeah, okay. Let's give uh Garvis Joiner, Garvis Joiner. He had a whole sponsorship real quick. So nice. that's that's two. We need three more guys. I got it. We got we got to jump on this. I want five by tonight, and that, that's another one. And like I say, it's just so easy to do. Go to the link on bluedeathvalley.com. It's right up there on the home page, and uh, you'll see it. And uh, it takes takes. It took me two minutes. It took Craig like a minute forty five. He's trying to one up me, and uh, see if see if, see if y'all can get your credit card out and put your numbers in in less than a minute. That's the I think that's the standard right now. A minute forty five seconds. See if y'all can do the Blue Death Challenge. And get that whole sponsorship for that um, Hall of Fame uh, golf tournament on March. Excuse me, on September the eighth at the Oak Hollow Golf Course. Yeah, I think that's about it, guys. We uh, I think we touched on everything. Uh, anything, Doug? You want, you want the last word, man? You want, you want to take us out of here? Uh, yeah, I'll take us out of here, man. I want to give a shout out to um, all the guys that came out to our uh, football reunion. We had an all-inclusive oh, yeah. reunion the other week. Yeah, how'd it go? How'd that go? It went well, man. I got a chance to see guys I hadn't seen in 20-plus years. Uh, it's always good anytime you can fellowship with the, the guys from the 70s and the 80s, man. <laughs> they keep some stuff going. But weather was great. Again, the food was great, and the fellowship was even better. Um, and it was good to see the guys and, and rub elbows with the guys. But um, just, just excited about the year, man. I think 
uh, Aggie fans are going to be in store for a very fun year, very competitive year. I truly believe that we have a chance and are capable of winning any game on our schedule. And so that's always a, a good situation when you when you believe you can compete with everybody on the schedule. And um, But nobody knows for sure. So, again, the unknown is what's so exciting about uh, what we got coming up. But um, uh, I'm confident in, in the team being in Coach Brown's hands. He's done a great job leading so far. Guys have a lot of glowing things to say about all the coaches and the coaching staff. So uh, that's all great. But we all know the, the fun and games begin next week, right? All, the honeymoon period is officially over <laughs> come the press conference. Uh, with some mods start firing questions and, and, and everybody else oh, in there, yeah. especially the, <laughs> if, if the Mad Hatter shows up and starts firing nah. off. But, uh, yeah. no, all, all jokes aside, man, um, I, I think we are primed and ready. Um, preparation doesn't end when camp ends, you know. I feel like you're still building your team um, up until this point, and I think that Fan Fest is even a part of that, right? Uh, having all your, your students and your mm-hmm. fans there, oh, and yeah, then when yeah. the band comes marching down, as they say, the band comes marching in, you know, that, that's kind of that first feeling of like a game feeling when you've got um, just that energy radiating throughout the stadium. So I heard there'll be some some surprises up, up some folks' sleeve. It's going to be done a little different. There might be something that unexpected going on. So be sure you get there early. Um, all the students come out. Weather should be great. Um, come with your pens. Your Sharpie's ready to get some autographs. And, and it's a great day to make those guys feel special, right? I always try to get as many autographs and signatures as I can. Um, and, and just let those guys feel what it, what it feels like to, to be treated like a superstar because they are superstars, right? Yeah, superstars yeah, in yeah. the making, right? So, so okay, okay, I can dig it. Oh, one more thing. Um, all, all my prayer warriors, keep keep focused and uh, send your energy to that Brick House family. I talked to some representatives from that family. They were so appreciative that everyone was, uh, you know, had them in their thoughts and prayers. They feel the energy. Okay, so you know. I'm not trying to get all religions here, but I'm a, I'm a proponent that prayer works, right? So if you are under under that belief and you believe that prayer works, the uh, um, the uh, Brickhouse family they need your they need your prayers, they need your your, your strong positive energy. Um, they they going through some, you know health. The family's going through some, um, some health issues, and and uh, they're getting hey it's 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 getting better because that energy is coming from us. So let's keep on. Uh, keep keep on keeping on. We're gonna uh, have some some uh, great praise reports to, to announce pretty soon. I'm, I'm definitely definitely sure of it. Um, but until then, I see I might be able to see some of you uh, jive turkeys on Saturday at the stadium. Um, and uh, Craig, I know you're probably gonna be too. Uh, that's that's one weekend I don't. It's gonna be it's gonna be tight. <laughs> It's gonna be tough yeah. to use for it. Yeah. Good lord, all that stuff you guys do. I mean, it's 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 for a yeah. wonderful cause. Y'all do a great job every year. Uh, I'm sure Dr. Simmons will be out there taking some pictures. Oh yeah, so Dr. Simmons is back in the fold. He oh, yeah. shot me. He shot me a bunch of. Uh, he sent me a bunch of photos yesterday. I'm gonna upload those. I'll have those live tomorrow. So go to the site bluedeathvalley.com and you'll see the uh, first uh, fall edition for uh dr simmons's photo gallery he thought you know he's gonna be there all, all year um we might have some numerous new members of the clique uh who's uh, gonna help us out with the, with the photos so we always want to cover every possible angle make sure we get every shot um but until then uh for doug brown the president craig turner i am samaj marsh this has been a great episode of inside the valley Thank you so much, Coach Lane, for coming out. We appreciate your energy, your in, your intellect, your insight. Um, that's, we're gonna have a good we're gonna have a good one under Coach Lane, man. But I'm Samaj Marsh. It's been inside the valley. We'll see you next week. Aggie Pride. Aggie Pride. Aggie Pride. <laughs>